Welcome back to Susie Snacks. I'm Susie Carter, and this is where I give you bite-sized information for your cocktail for success. This is all about money and you. A new report from UBS found that 56 of married women leave investment and long-term financial decision-making to their men. 85% of women who defer to their husband believe that their spouses know more about the financial manners. It's not just the older generation. Millennial women are more likely to leave the investment decisions to their husband than any other age group. Based on this report, which included surveys with nearly 1,700 married couples, including heterosexual and same-sex couples. And here's why they're concerned for me. Women are living longer than men, and the average life expectancy for a woman is five years more than a man. And the divorce rate among couples 50 and older are just about doubled since the 1990s. These two forces mean that eight out of 10 women will end up alone and solely responsible for their financial well-being. Look, I'm an advocate for this because that's what happened to me. When my husband left, he was managing 95% of that. And I knew what was going on, but there was things that I didn't know. And when my dad passed away, he left no will. His wife didn't know anything about their finances and his deceased wife was the beneficiary of his retirement and his pension leaving her with nothing. Luckily, we as the kids were willing to make sure that she was taken care of and not left holding all the debt with no ability to pay things off. Because he had no will, the property went into what was called probate and it was a long, painful process for his wife. So let's get you managing your own finances and being responsible for your future and your family. I'm going to give you five strategies that you can start with today to set yourself up and set your financial success for a secure future. The first and foremost thing, and I know it doesn't matter how old you are, you're going to think you're too young for this, is I need you to create a will. Having a will will arguably want to be one of the most important things you can do for yourself and your family. Not only will it legally protect your spouse and your children and your assets, it can also spell out exactly who you'd like things to, how you'd like things handled and who you want to pass them on to. You get to decide right now what you want done with your estate. Your estate is just your property. It's your things versus your family deciding. I've seen many, many fights with family over this if it not being clear. What will happen to your kids if they're minors? Who'll take care of them? And more importantly, who do you want to take care of them? So a will is imperative. If you don't do anything else this year, I want you to do that. The second thing is I want you to set up a retirement fund. When it comes to personal finances and the tips for entrepreneurs and anyone for that matter, this tip is an absolute basic. You, like all workers, need to be prepared for retirement. I know we all think we're too young and we're not getting there. But the reality is setting up a retirement fund will help you get there. You don't have to funnel a ton of money towards that fund, but what's saved now will help you curb your tax bill right now currently and then grow tax deferred income when you decide to use those funds in the future. We want to make sure the next point is all about diversifying and diversifying your investments. If you know my story, you know that I had gotten millions and I sold my business for millions. And then in 2007, when the market crashed, I crashed with the market. I was so heavily invested in real estate that all my eggs were pretty much in one basket. So another important financial tip is for small businesses, we want to diversify. Diversification is one of the most important tenets of investing. Diversifying is especially important tip for us as small business owners because entrepreneurs tend to reinvest all their capital in totally into their business. While investing in your business is important and it absolutely will help you grow, you shouldn't put all your eggs in that basket and all your assets in one bet, especially considering how risky it is to be a small business owner that about 50% of small businesses survive the first five years. So by allocating funds into other types of businesses, side businesses, alternative investments, or just putting cash aside in a savings account, you're giving yourself some breathing room. If you need to close up shop for whatever reason, not all your assets will be funneled into that one failed business. The only way that I survived when I had my financial meltdown is I was diversified. I had money in real estate. I had money in the stock market. I had money in my savings. So I had money in different places so that when something crashed, everything didn't crash. Which brings me to my next point. 
plan for an off season with an emergency fund. As an adult, you've probably been told to have an emergency fund for rainy days, and we all love the concept of it. This is a personal finance tip that as small business owners, we absolutely must follow. Odds are business isn't booming all the time, month to month. We have high highs and low low. And as a business owner, you're probably likely to deal with irregular income throughout the year. As a business owner myself, especially in a seasonal business, it's important to budget for those down months and make sure that you have enough emergency savings on hand so you can weather the storm in the downturn of the business or in those slower times in the month. Like anyone else, you need to cover all your expenses, your housing, your food, your insurance, your children. So always keep your personal finances in mind. The next piece I wanna talk about is not commingling your funds. That means keep your business and your personal finances separate. Your business account is not your personal bank account. As a small business owner or a startup entrepreneur, this is the next personal financial tip is especially hard. You're so invested and interconnected with your business that it might feel like your business and you are one. While that enthusiasm is a key trait for successful entrepreneurs, it shouldn't apply to all your finances. Keeping your business and your personal finances separate is important for a lot of reasons. One, it's saving you from the headache during tax season when you're deducting your business expenses, giving your business more credibility and more legitimacy as a business. It removes your personal liability from something negative happening to your business down the road. It's also making sure that you're not putting the burden of your business finances on your personal accounts. When you start your business, open a business banking account and apply for a business credit card to use solely for business expenses. This is a great start to separating your personal and your business. Plus doing so will build your business credit and separate you from your business even more clearly defined. So those are some simple things that we need to do to start planning our financial well-being and creating money in you. I want you to take, take hold of your financial future. I want you to be responsible for your financial future and put a plan together for you and for your family. So leave me a message, share this with a friend, share it with your tribe and your community so that we can together empower women to being responsible for their finances.